Welcome, 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 my lovelies. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> um, I feel like a madman at the moment. Um, we are sort of literally any day now about to leave to go on holiday for two weeks. Um, all will be revealed on the uh, up and coming video once it's made. Um, and we, I can't tell you how excited we are. I'm so excited about doing my work all the time with the houses, as you know, on top of going on holiday. Um, I tell you, I'm going to need um, emergency treatment soon, <laughs> in some form or the other. Before I forget, um, I have had your name down for a little while and realised that I hadn't ticked it off. So I do apologise. So if Jess... CA is watching. Um, I, I don't know, maybe maybe that means you're Jess from California. I don't know. Um, maybe not, or maybe. Um, but if it doesn't matter anyway, so welcome Jess to you. Um, if you are. So, uh, I, my video I'm doing really is to do with my curtains that I'm making that I said on one of my, either my last video or the video before that I was doing that now, but I wasn't going to make a video of it because you guys can probably do your own curtains. But this morning when I got up, I was thinking, I'm still working on the curtains. And I thought to myself, um, there might be one or two of you that are just starting out um, and, and learning everything you can. So, um, so I thought, right, I'll put on my video today how I'm doing the curtains. Um, Oh, I can't remember which video it was, but I watched maybe five or six YouTube videos and one of them looked quite easy and looked quite interesting and I tried it and it works. Um, I feel bad for that person because I can't remember which video, which uh, YouTube person it was. But they probably don't, they're busy doing their own videos, so they probably don't even know about me. So I will show you what I have learned. Um, as they look quite good, they look okay. Um, the fabrics I'm using are from, I splashed out a little bit, they're from Le Chimoiserie. If I hold that up in the camera there, you should be able to see that. Le Chimoiserie.com. Oh, right, what we'll do is, oh, uh, of course, how can I forget? Cheers. Um, for this project, I've been using. You need a piece of card, you can use cardstock, or you can use um, a quiche box from last night's quiche. That's if you had a quiche last night and you had a box with it. If not, you need to use another box. So what we're going to do is, I'll show you what I've done so far. Okay, so here we have two, of, two sets of curtains upstairs uh, that I've completed with the um, helmet across the, the top there. Just plain and simple. It was a really easy um, tutorial to follow. So hopefully I can um, help you guys um, to make these if, if you uh, desire. You can... Okay, so you get your piece of card. Um, you can stick two pieces together to make it a bit thicker and a bit stronger. Um, it depends on, on the card itself. Um, but if I just show you quickly where you've got your, your window frame here, um, the card is an inch wide, so just cut long strips uh, an inch wide and then you can cut them down to size, down to length. And all I do is lay, lay a strip from one edge of the window there along and I just mark half an inch past the, uh, the, the upper end there. So this card is half an inch longer than the width of the window. Once you've done that, move your card to the centre so you now have quarter of an inch sticking out each side and make two little marks quarter of an inch like so and then across the top of your card there just mark in quarter of an inch all along and draw a line so you end up your quarter of an inch in and quarter of an inch down from the top which gives you a sort of goal post type or a C shape or a U shape depending on which way you hold it um, but I shall draw that out and show you what that looks like Okay, so I have drawn a quarter of an inch in from all around the edge there, and then on that line I'm going to cut that out. I will show you on 
another piece of card. Here we've changed colour, it was a different card. Um, in fact, there I've stuck two bits together. I think this is a box of cornflakes or something. Um, so just cut those out. And when you've done that, you will find that it will just sit over the top of your window like that. So it just hugs around the outside of the window. Okay, so we'll take that off again and show you the next step. Right, okay, so I've, I've already made a couple of pairs of curtains as you can see uh, already. So I've, uh, so this has sort of been used, but I'll show you, hopefully you can see what I've done here. Um, right, this is a piece of mat board or uh, foam board or something that you can stick pins in easily. And you want to get your uh, card, piece of card, Lay it at the top, somewhere near the top of the foil. This is just, um, uh, I, was, I just got mixed up with the words there because we call it aluminium because I think there's an extra I in the way it's spelt in the UK, but aluminum for you guys. Sorry if this is going to be shiny on the, on the camera. Um, so for, for our American friends, um, a sheet of aluminum, uh, right at the top near the top there just lay that on so like so just anywhere near the top and just draw around that with a pencil so i just drew around it with a pencil i don't know if you can see i now have the shape uh, exactly of the uh, piece of card you may even see pinholes there from when i made the last curtains so you've got that shape on there um, and also on your actual window itself from the top of the, the frame there, at the very top there, measure down to the bottom of your window and then add an inch. Uh, with mine, the bottom of the window came to six inches, um, so I've marked down to seven. It's just come off the edge of the alu aluminum there, um, but you, you could have it all the way down, uh, but it doesn't matter, just draw a line there so you've got the length. Um, and then what you do is lay your fabric, your pieces of fabric that you're going to use, down from the top of the window, just lay the fabric down to the length that you want. Mine is seven inches, um, so it allows for the hem, um, and then just cut that out. Um, you, you can. It has worked out that you you cut it the width of the window as well. So this is half a curtain. So when it's all scrunched up, that will go to one side, and then you'll have another piece exactly the same to go to the other side. Um, it just so happened with the um, fabric we got from, or I've got from Les um that is the fabric exactly cut in half. Um, I was left with a little bit at the, at the bottom, just a strip, and that is just enough, uh, well, with a tiny bit over, to make the pelmet along the top. So that was quite handy. So anyway, so we've done that, and now I'm going to get the next stage. Okay, so your two curtains here. And the next step was to go to the iron and fold all the edges over about a quarter of an inch. Just do it, just eyeball it, um, fold it all around and press it. And then um, you can glue it. You can use the uh, tacky glue or high tack glue, anything like that. That does, uh, it's really good for fabrics along with card and other things. Uh, trimmings and stuff um, you can glue it down just be careful you don't put too much on so the glue doesn't come through the other side or if you're a sewer or sewist like myself um, then you take it through to the um, sewing machine which I have set up in the kitchen and I just sewed all around the edges um, just as quick as gluing in fact it's quicker because you haven't got to wait for the glue to dry um, so and you feel like you're making real curtains if you actually use a sewing machine <laughs> um, I have to tell you, uh, I finished work uh, doing all this uh, last night about five o'clock in the afternoon and John, my partner, had gone to visit um, family and uh, he wasn't going to be back till late in the evening. Um, so while it was still just, while it was still daylight, we still had a couple of hours of daylight, um, I took, for the first time in five years, I took my metal detector down to our local beach um, and just thought I'll just have a, do a little metal detecting. Um, anyone that's done it before um, knows that it's just really good exercise because you're walking backwards and forwards 
and uh, you may or may not find anything but when you do it's good fun and I managed to find in the two hours I found myself um, 54 bottle tops, metal uh, bottle tops from beer bottles on the beach <laughs> and 61 pence in uh, English money, UK money so uh, yay, I'm going to put that 61 pence towards my holiday money <laughs> so one day I shall pay I'll find enough money to pay for my metal detector um, then it will be serious uh, stuff I'll be doing um, right moving on so we've got our curtains so we'll do one curtain at a time you'll need some pins I have my uh, pin cushion here um, so you'll need some pins preferably with heads on um, because you have to push down into the board um, so the, 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 the dressmaker pins that you get that are just metal on the ends, they would be too sore to use. So something with a, a head on it. Um, and then you get your curtain, and I shall show you here. Um, I had a bit more than that, um, and I, I used it for the other curtains, so it's gone down a bit, but there's still plenty here. So this is just a mixture of water, so I just pour some water into a bowl and pour some of the tacky glue in and just pour it in and swill it round and you want it a consistency in England we call it skimmed milk I hate it some people do love it I don't but it's a very thin watery milky uh, substance uh, it's not thick don't do it really thick because that's that will just go gloopy then um, but just a very thin sort of watery watered down milk look so if I move this down so you can see what I'm doing here, hopefully this is going to help. There we go. Hopefully this is okay for you guys. As I said, I wasn't planning on doing this as a video, um, but it may be of interest to someone and may help someone. Um, so you get one of your curtains and dunk it into the liquid, into the liquid glue, and just squash it right down and get it really, really wet. Seems wrong doing this to such nice fabric, <laughs> dipping it in uh, glue. But anyway, there we are. I'll just lift it out and just scrunch it all together, just to scrunch out the excess, the excess glue. Oops, like so. There we are. Um, you can try and sort of fold it at the top and put it all in place. Um, I've just, when I started I realised that wasn't a good thing for me to do um, but what I do do is where you have you might not see it on the foil there so I'll get the card where I have drawn out around the, with a pencil there just to mark on the um, aluminum foil uh, the shape there um, what I'm going to do is lay the corner of one of the uh, curtains on the corner of the of the wood, it's uh, at the corner of the foil there. So I'll just lay it on so it just covers that. The top of the curtain will go along the edge of the top of the card and the side of the curtain will go just down the side of the card. I won't do it on the card, obviously, um, because it will just make it wet and, and uh, mushy. But where the foil is there, I'm going to lay it on the corner there. So it just covers those lines and put a pin in like so hopefully you can see that and then let's move this out of the way I'm sticking to it now it's wet with glue um, and now what I do is if I move this out of the way um, I'm left-handed so I'll have to turn this around and hopefully you can still see this um, what you're going to do is um, I've marked the the center mark there of the curtain so I'm just going to lay the other side on the centre, in fact, so I just get the centre at the other side of my curtain, lay it on the centre, just over the centre mark, and put a pin in there. Whoops. Like that. And then, to gather this, you just have to do it by eye, really, and you're just going to put some natural sort of gathers in. But I just start at one end, Actually, you can't see this. Really sorry. Um, there we are. What I do is put one pin in and, and lift the fabric up at the, where this pin is. Just lift the fabric up just slightly. Push the fabric along a tiny bit and put in another pin. 
and then grab another pin, lift the fabric up with the pin and down with my finger just to make a little little pleat there or a little fold and then another one. Okay, so I've got the uh, the pleats or the scrunch, scrunched up bits along the top there and just pinned in between each one. And then down the side there, I'm just put, hanging the curtain straight down the side and putting a pin roughly where I want the tie back and then a pin at the bottom there just to hold it in a sort of straight line. It doesn't matter how um, straight that is, but just sort of on the edge of the, the line going down to the, the bottom of the curtain there. And then what you're doing is just drawing the curtain in to, to the uh, where you want the tie back and just arranging the folds as you do it. Natural looking fold there. Um, get it nice and, and shaped and fan a bit out at the bottom there. And push it in quite a bit there where you want the where you want the tie back to go. And then just stick some more pins in between. Sorry my hand is in the way, but I'm sure you've got an idea of what I'm doing here. You'll be able to see it. And so if I hold that up, you can see it. Maybe a better look there. And it just looks natural the way it's sort of falling down and then just scrunched in there. When that's dry, um, it's not that hard that you can't move the fabric, so you'll be able to squash that in more um, when you put your, your tie back in. Um, but this just sort of gives it a good, um, a good shape to start with. There we are. And then all we're going to do is soak the other side of the curtain. I'll just get the, the milky, watery glue here. Uh, if you can see that, just pin down Start at the corner again, get that nice and even on that, on that shape. You can pin down the sides there if you want straight away, just to get that straight line. Like that. And then one at the bottom. And then the top curtain along here, um, just pin it. And I just would just cross over the top. So take out the pin from the first curtain that you've done and lay this on top, the second curtain, and just put a pin through both. Like so. Can't do it from the top there, but I'm just going to scrunch this up and pleat this up, push it into place, and then we'll have the two of them. And then I'll uh, wash my hands and show you where we're going from there. There we are, okay, so once you've got it all more or less pinned in place, as I said, you can move it afterwards when it's dry um, a little bit, so uh, but it's just to give you the basic shape of the curtains hanging naturally. So I will um, just put the hair dryer on this and I will get them dried off so we can move on and show you what we're doing next. There's not much, to, not much left to do, um, so hurrah! And sorry about the light, the sun with the blinds, it keeps going light and dark. Sorry about that. I'm going to put the kettle on while I'm um, blow drying my curtains. I never ever thought I would say that sentence. <laughs> okay, so once you've pulled all the pins out of the curtains, um, it's there. Yeah, well, that's good. Um, it doesn't actually stick very well, the glue, um, the curtains to the aluminum, which is what we want. Um, normally we're annoyed because glue doesn't work. Um, but they did cut, they just come unstuck really quickly, even though they were soaked in glue. Um, so that's quite good. But as you can see, they're sort of keeping their, their shape. So what we're doing next is to get the piece of card that we cut earlier and lay that down anywhere. And then get some of our um, tacky glue and put that quite liberally on the card. Like so. There we are. And then lay the first curtain on. Just again the shape of the, uh, the, the the C shape there. Just lay that along the top and down the side just to line up. Like that. So where it's pleated at the top, you're just sort of sticking that on the card and a little bit down the edge there. And then the other side, you can put a bit of glue on the overlap of the curtain to glue that, lift that up and then stick that on top, and 
just hold it. Sorry, my hands are in the way. But just, um, you get the idea of what we're doing here. Just squash it down. It sticks with this tacky glue, it sticks, sticks quite easily. There we are. So if I can pick that up, there's the back of it there, just stuck onto the, onto the card, like so. So we'll just give that, I'll give that 10 minutes to really fix and uh, and take take hold there. In the meantime, if I move this up, um, we are going to get, where have I put a piece of card? Oh, here we are. Um, so another piece of card, um, again, an inch wide. Uh, I've just cut it, or an inch deep, um, however you want to call it. And this time I've laid it on and I've cut the, again, like we did with the first card and the edge of the window, I'm now going to lay this card on the actual size of the curtains from end to end. So I'll lay it on one end and then cut the card half an inch longer than the uh, than where the curtains come to. So this card is actually half an inch longer than it is from there to there. And then on that card, I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch on each end. So I do that. Do that now, this side and this side. So now that in that space is the is the actual width of the the curtains. And then while we've got the ruler there, I get my um, exacto knife or one of them, and just very lightly score where you've uh, where you've drawn your quarter of an inch line. Don't go right through the card, just score it. And then when you pick it up, you should be able to just bend that into shape. And this side, there we are, that should just bend into shape. So it gives you this, this sort of shape here, just with the edges here. So now we've done that, um, I'm going to cut a piece of fabric, the same, you could do a different fabric, um, depending on what you wanted, um, but I've got a little bit of this curtain fabric left. So I'm just going to cut a strip um, a quarter of an inch wider and longer than this piece of card, and then I'm just going to get some more tacky glue, um, put the glue on the card. When I put the glue on, I'm going to go over it with my finger there just to smooth the whole thing so it's not lumpy. Um, bits of glue so just smear the, the glue over the card completely and then lay that down onto your fabric and then fold the quarter of an inch uh, fabric in all around the edge there and um, just to glue that in place so that's easy enough I shall do that and then show you that dry okay so that's the, the back of it there it's just folded in around the edges and just glued down and that's from the front that's quite nice and you can make sure you can bend the ends in at the edge there don't do it too tight that you can't fold the fabric round when you bend the card um, now put a line of glue along all the top of your your curtains mostly on the uh, the bits that stick out like the uh, extremities um, just put a tacky glue all along those ridges or those pleats like so There we are, and you can put a little bit of glue if you want, just on the inside folds there at the ends. You don't have to do that bit, but it just all helps to glue everything together. And then make sure your, especially if it's patterned, make sure your pelmet, the fabric is the right way up, the same as the curtains, not upside down. On a pattern thing like this, you probably wouldn't see it if, unless you really studied them. But it's just nice to know that things are, are right. And then I'm just going to glue that on. You can glue it along the top edge of the curtain so that the pelmet matches up with that if you want it quite low down. Or you can raise it up quite high so the curtains are down inside. Depends how much curtain you want showing. That's just personal preference. Um, I have to stand up for this bit. Um, but just lay it on top. I've got mine so they're just maybe caught the pelmet, the top of the pelmet is quarter of an inch higher 
than the top of the curtain and that's just my preference so lay it on like that like so hopefully you can see that okay and then just press down lightly with your fingers push the edges in to make a little box shape like so um, and then what I did for that um, just to keep it in place get a couple of um, boxes and just press your press the, the, the small end of the, uh, the, the permit up against one uh, box this is just my glasses case box that my, that my glasses are in and then I just press that box up against there now you can't see much but that's just holding the two edges upright instead of lying flat and it's pressed down in the middle just a very lightweight anything really now I'm using my rotary cutter that's got a bit of weight in it and I'll just lay that on the fabric like so uh, on the pelmet and we'll um, just leave that for a half an hour um, it probably doesn't take that long um, but just time enough to um, enjoy your cup of tea yeah say hello night Ooh. Ooh, hates that don't you what oh you're purring oh, okay Ooh. in case anyone is interested uh, while we're away, Nigel is uh, one of our very close friends, is coming to house sit and she will be looking after Nigel and giving him lots of hugs and kisses and running around the house playing with him and letting him sneak up into the bathroom to um, drink out of the water tap, <laughs> which is not meant to, but there you go. Um, and also, if you're interested, it takes approximately 10 minutes to um, blow dry a pair of... Uh, bedroom curtains. <laughs> right, let's move on to the next step. Right, now a fresh cup of tea. Cheers. Oh, lovely. Okay, so I've come back to the curtains. That's the back of them. And there's the front. It's all dry and the edges are folded in and glued. Now for the tie backs, um, the ones uh, I'll do the uh, ones that I use the same material um, as the other curtains. Um, what I've used this is again um, last night in bed as always. I do all my thinking um, about what I'm going to do next, um, and I was thinking of um, curtain ties or whatever they're called, and you can get those that are they're, like I showed you on the other curtains, and they're quite hard. Um, they're fabric but they're quite solid looking and uh, I was thinking of cutting little strips of card and then sticking the fabric onto that um, but card has a tendency to crease when you try and bend it into a small circle and then flatten it uh, on to, to glue it uh, I think it would start creasing and bending and you wouldn't get a nice soft curve um, so you could use that but you just have to be very careful um, and uh, so you don't crease it um, or if you have it you may or may not um, but if you are a sewer or sewist um, you may have things like this which is this is called Decoville light Decoville light um, I know I, that's a big American thing as far as I know so you should if you sew you should know exactly what I'm talking about you can get Decoville heavy Decoville uh, Decoville light right so yes so for the Decoville light I just uh, just got my ruler and uh, rotary cutter and just cut a very thin strip um, enough for two um, two tie backs and then um, the Decoville light is uh, shiny on one side so it's a glue side so I put that down on a piece of fabric and put it on the ironing board so there's two you can't see there's two there there's just a gap between them there and um, so they've attached themselves to the fabric I'm now going to fold the fabric in with a bit of tacky glue. I shall do that, do that now. And, uh, and then just cut them in half, so I've got two. And then we can wrap them around the uh, curtains and glue them at the back um, in place. And then glue the whole curtain onto the, actually I'm doing this, <laughs> how rude of me. Um, sorry folks, I'm doing that without, uh, showing you what I'm doing 
And now, of course, my big hands are in the way, but there we are. Just glue that along the edge like so. I'm trying to think if you had very thin sheets of plastic you could cut um, and that would do the same job. Um, just very thin so it's very easy to bend. There we are, and a little glue, a little bit of glue along there. Like so. Fold that in on itself. There we are. There, yeah. so actually there's just a few couple of little um, warps or wefts, I don't know which ones they are, but just fray in slightly, don't want that showing. Pop those off. And just just bend it so you've got you know exactly where the where the gap is in the middle and just snip that in half. Throw one away. <laughs> pick it up again. <laughs> I always find that works better. And there we have the, the two tie backs. And with the Decaville light, they will bend now without um, creasing at all. They don't actually crease. They uh, Well, if you squash them together, you could get a crease in them, um, but they'll, they'll bend round without um, showing any dents like cardboard would. So I shall put those, place those around the curtains, just squish, squash or squish the curtains up slightly and glue them at the back and then we can put the whole thing on the uh, on the window frame. Okay so once the curtains are made um, on the back there as I said you've got the uh, cardboard there um, you can put a little bit of glue on there if you wish and also I've put a little bit of glue around the top edge of the window where the card sits so now this part this card bit there just locks on just fits on to the top of the uh, window frame there. So I'll just look from the top here and push it down over the top so it just sits neatly. So the bottom of the card will be along the, the top edge of the window there. And that's sort of, that's quite firm already, just locked on. So there we are, there's the curtains. So when you open up the, the, uh, the door to the, the house, then you'll see these nice curtains when you're looking at the room at the same time. From the outside, I'll show you the outside. Yeah, from the outside, you can just see bits of the, uh, like a hint of the uh, pattern of the curtains. Well, I folded it in around the edge. And I'll move along here and you can see so these ones here, um, which is how our curtains are at home. Um, I mean, I've put lining in our curtains uh, when I made those. Um, so they're... Um, so it's just got a a plain fabric, um, but obviously in the, the doll's house you could go that far if you want to show a, a curtain lining, um, but you will remember that you'll have a double thickness of fabric then, so it'll be much harder to uh, work with. Okay, so there you have it folks. Um, the uh, curtains for the upstairs of the uh, Parisian haberdashery. Um, I will be putting... Um, some like hints of curtains in the corners of the windows in the shop um i think well amelie thought that would look pretty as well in fact let me tell you about amelie just uh, an update if you've been following my my um, videos then you'll um you will have heard all about the proprietor of amelie um a french lady who uh, owns the owns the place and um, it's sort of, uh, it's probably fair to say that we, we haven't seen eye to eye over certain things I've done. Then, then she meets me at night when John's asleep, she appears and uh, we have our discussions, let's call them discussions. And then ne next day I'm changing whatever, ripping up floors, uh, re-upholstering things and whatever. Um, so, but what I do want to say is um, uh, just moving on in our relationship. Um, Amelie and myself um, have come to a really good understanding and we're actually getting on really, really well. This, this happened uh, a couple of nights ago. Um, she came as always uh, 
after we'd gone to bed and um, started talking about how things were going and everything and um, I'd upholstered, I'll show you, um, this is the, uh, the, the set, the sofa or the settee um, and the two chairs I have and the footstool um, that I'd got uh, purchased for her lounge, for her room and um, I said that I was upholstering them in this pure silk fabric with gold I'll show you it up close absolutely beautiful well I think it's beautiful the colouring is just lovely it's a sort of blue bluey grey bluey slate grey um, so uh, this is chair one of two plus I had the sofa to do and the footstool and um, so I had done this one and put it in the lounge and left it there um, overnight was going to come back to it the next day to carry on reupholstering but that evening um, Emily came to me or Amelie came to me sorry the name spelt with an A it's French and um, uh, it ended up she actually invited me back over to um, Paris dare I say gay Paris <sighs> all right I get the joke <laughs> um, so yes, so she invited me back over to Paris because we were getting a bit heated to start with in our discussions and I didn't want to wake John. I mean, he's lying there asleep and she's rabbiting on in one ear. So uh, so I went back to Paris uh, with her um, and uh, I mean, at, at the time I must I didn't think, but if John had woken up in the middle of the night and I'd gone completely gone, you know, to, to another country, um, I think he would have um, been calling the uh, ambulance or something. Um, but anyway, so we, uh, it was lovely, we sat in a, um, it was an all night cafe on, on the streets of Paris, um, there were still people around, walking around in the streets, uh, it was quiet, but really, really nice, it had rained that evening, so the, the uh, pavements were all glistening and shiny, and we, it was warm, because so, it is warm at the moment, so we sat outside, um, had a little drink, and a little coffee, and, um, and we ended up having a real heart to heart, but we both came to the conclusion, <laughs> you'll think we're both mad, that the, although the fabric is, I think the fabric is beautiful and Amelie thinks the fabric is beautiful, she thinks it's very, um, uh, very suave and sophisticated, um, we actually don't like the furniture and we both agreed on this. Um, so I had bought this, purchased this for the lounge um, and now we both agree that we're not going to use it. So, um, little brass feet at the bottom there, very pretty. Um, so, complete waste of time. Um, but it means that I've not only um, ripped apart one of these and cut the fabric up and torn it and reupholstered it uh, with this one, um, I now have an odd suite, so it doesn't even match. So, um, although I'm not going to use it, at some point I will rip the rest apart and reupholster it in the silk fabric and probably I don't have another house for it to go in at the moment and it won't suit my new house, my new abode I was going to say, abode and house, house, <laughs> um, it won't suit um, the new house which I'm still not telling you about till a few videos along. Um, so watch this space. So I may end up, if I do get round to doing the suite in and complete it, I may end up putting this on my Etsy shop. So if you're interested in a, in this style of suite, in a lovely silk fabric, um, maybe mention it, or if you're seriously interested in it, that then let me know, that may help me to get round to actually doing it. If not, it may be left in a box for weeks and weeks and weeks months to come who knows who cares <laughs> right so what we did do um was um that very night there was a um uh, a little antique shop open um it was late at night but it was open and we went in and had a look around and she chose a couple of pieces of furniture uh one being this the basic um couch which is much more refined more french looking um I mean, it came from a, net, a French antique store, so uh, it would be French. Um, so there's this, 
and this one which is in pieces now because I have started work on it is the chaise long as well no French lounge is um, complete without a chaise long I mean come on um, so uh, that that was what it looked like in this pink fabric with the, the bits at the bottom and the base of it which isn't here now I've pulled it all apart it wasn't even um, buttoned like this it was just uh, just flat smooth fabric um, but I've ripped the whole thing apart as you can see this will be on another video I shall do a video of, of um, the reupholstering of this um, and I'm going to paint it as well um, I may be investing in an airbrush gun I don't know yet they are ex well good ones that expensive um, I don't know if it's just a, if I'm just completely wasting my money or not um, but I may do that so then I can start spraying furniture and making it really nice and even so we'll see that's 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 to come um, but these two pieces I'm planning on reupholstering in the silk fabric she still wants the silk fabric and I've got plenty of it um, well I actually bought quarter of a metre um, of it at the uh, miniature affair and I can't remember now, but it was the most I'd ever spent on a, a, a quarter of a metre of a piece of fabric. But it is pure silk, so. So anyway, so these will be in the lounge instead of these. Sorry, these. Um, and yes, that will be another, another video to come. But as I said, we've uh, really come to a good understanding now, Amelie and me. And uh, we're actually really enjoying the journey together. Um, so I quite look forward to her coming along and in saying that um, for some of you that are just getting into doll housing or miniature in whatever you want to call it um, and may not quite have got the bug um, or say bug I hate when people do that why did I do that don't do it again <laughs> um, what I do want to say is on a serious note yes I talk about someone who owns this shop and no they are not a real person and yes I do know that <laughs> in case in case I sound too serious and people start worrying about my state of mind um, what I want to say about that is it really really does help this is like all the videos you get of the top 20 tips and whatever of doing things in dolls housing I think the, the, the number one tip of, of, of doing miniatures and dolls houses um, like these uh, the number one tip is to uh, once you've decided on the the house that you've, that you've bought once you've decided on what it's going to be uh, whether it's going to be a shop or a house or a castle or haunted house or whatever um, funeral parlor whatever um, then you it's really really good to when you're on your own as I say it's when I go to bed at night and you can think what you want then when you go to bed you don't you're not doing things during the day that make you think things um, you start thinking of how many people are in there who lives there who works in there who owns it who runs it um, and start thinking how they would think and walk around pretend you've met them walk around the house with them or the shop or whatever discuss with them and it's it, it it helps you immensely it makes I have to say because I've seen one or two houses now over my time uh, the years that I've been doing this um, uh, I have seen one or two houses that look so sterile with basic bits put in um, all catalog pieces uh, no artistry no um, no self style or anything and you it, you can see that it's just been done mechanically the person that's done that and has that owns that house has not visualized who lives there or who works there or anything and they haven't built up a picture in their head if you start doing that you almost look forward to that time when you're maybe or if you do during the day maybe when you want to just sit down on your own have a, a, a tea or a coffee or a glass of wine or whatever and you just want to relax and just close your eyes and picture meeting that person or people and talk to them so I know I've maybe rabbited on a bit um, but uh, and you maybe have already stopped the video you may be bored to tears I hope not <laughs> I really do 
Um, but yeah, I think that to me, that's number one tip. Visualize who is going to be living in your house and in your head, start having a relationship with them. Um, well, I say relationship, but obviously there's nothing between myself and Amelie. Come on. <laughs> apart from apart from John would be more than shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know I think I'd have to go undergo some kind of medical um <laughs> intervention <laughs> let's not go there but she is a beautiful looking lady I have to say I can see beauty in lay in in women very much so and she's absolutely gorgeous and I am so proud and pleased and happy that I'm working for her and hopefully she'll allow us or at least myself um, to come to her shop sometimes to visit her and go out for a drink. You know, why not? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> right. Okay, folks. Nice to speak to you. My tea is empty, so I can't cheers you. Um, but thank you very, very much for watching and hope to see you very soon. Um, as I say, this may be the last video for a few weeks. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I really am sorry about that. Um, but when we come back, I'll have loads more to put on, loads more things, uh, f finishing off the basics in the house here so we can carry on and move on to the next house. Um, a holiday type video, I don't even know what that's going to be, but I'll do something um, to let you know how we've got on. Um, and yeah, see you soon. Well, speak to you soon. And also looking forward to doing, when I get back, I'll organise a live session um, as I said, it may be a sort of late afternoon for me, which seems to be the best time. Uh, people write from four hours, to, from minus four hours to minus eight hours back from us in time. If I uh, do the video about five-ish in the afternoon, then you're sort of nine, eight or nine o'clock in the morning. So I've caught you, maybe. And the only time it is a bit upsetting is um, my lovely friend, Marianne in um, Melbourne, Australia, and Karen. Good day, Karen, if you're watching. Um, sadly, it will be about three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning for you. I can't, um, I can't arrange the whole world to be on at the same time unless you get up at silly o'clock. But I will then do other live videos after that um, and maybe do those at slightly different times. Um, to try and catch other people that will come on and be able to see. Anyway, let's put the kettle on and have another drink. Take care, everyone, and see you very soon. I'm, I'm off to get my, my hair done, my beard did, and uh, off to holiday. See you soon. Take care. Bye, all.